So kind of a follow up, but also very different to my previous video about artificial womb and everything. I want to focus more about talking about the microfluidic device that I talk about implant, but for all sorts of people. And I think it could be very useful for people with a couple disability issues and more. One is that many, so the first one I want to go over is that many autistic people and many other neurodivergents, we just don't sense our body as well. And that means sometimes we get dehydrated. We don't notice it. I know I have, oftentimes when I'm really focused on something, I don't notice when I'm hungry or dehydrated until I start feeling sick. Sometimes we overdo stuff, so we overeat or overdrink. That can happen to a lot of people. Two, not only neurodivergent and autistic people, sometimes we don't have enough nutrients of a certain type in our body. And this could lead to a way to monitor health in a way that we can see our health or alert if we get really bad. So first one out there, monitoring people's health, especially neurodivergence. Another one is that for people with axial disabilities that have something wrong with the chemicals or chemistry in the body, you could think about advanced ones for maybe people with blood glucose monitoring for diabetes, which you don't have symptoms as much, or ones that maybe could see if you're about to have a heart attack or seizure by monitoring the blood or other things. More um, seizures and uh, blood heart monitoring, not as much because we don't have a chemical in the ticket, that'll be more electronics, but it could see that your health is leading up to that many times before and give it, but it won't give you an acute one more that your health is on the wrong track to it, but over time, the data collected could give better ones. Like, example, that it senses that there's too high blood pressure over a while and low oxygen that might lead to a seizure or a heart condition. So there's that type of monitoring. Another type of monitoring that I think could be useful is um, maybe this could be the ultimate um, pregnancy test that could tell you, hey, I am pregnant right now, very early on. Or I could even tell um, for people that want to do the counter method with periods, it might be actually be an accurate way of doing it instead of the way current ones, which are very, very inaccurate. It could tell um, a bunch of other things. It could tell you maybe if you're in the way future, maybe if you have a virus or other disease before you go to doctors. That one's a bit more futuristic. There is a cool thing that wasn't ever really developed that much called viral chip. And the basic idea of viral chip was that it could sequence a bunch of DNAs or RNA. Quick aside, viruses can code the genomic material in DNA or an RNA. DNA is what we have as genetic material, and we could turn it into something called RNA. And there's also other uses for RNA, and RNA that makes the proteins that actually make you. But RNA is like an in-between thing. And the reason why we have that in-between thing is RNA is a lot more easy to transport all over the body. And it's also a lot easier for the body to manipulate in ways to control how it makes protein, and you can store it and use it more times. And it also lets the DNA be more um, protected, when RNA could mutate much more. Well, I'm not mutating as say chains. You can kind of think of DNA as like a RAM or, or if you think about DNA as like a book, you don't want the people to give out the book to everyone, all the chefs, because then all the chefs that use the book, or all the people use the book might damage it, but you might copy out sections out of the book and hand them individually to different people. And then the, if any of those copied sections get messed up, it's not a big deal. And there's more things you can do with like one person could scratch out the recipe without damaging the actual book or anything. So some viruses have, instead of DNA, have the genetic information called an RNA, which then gets put into our DNA and every, vice versa. But back to my point, viral chip. Viral chip turn, can take DNA or RNA, and has a bunch of ways of detecting different DNA and RNA in the body and sequencing it to see if you have any viruses or more, including ones not discovered. They were making rapid progress in it, then they just stopped getting funding 
and stopped. And if we had this technology and kept funding it before the pandemic, well, we could have detected the pandemic way earlier, way faster, way more tests. And beyond that, we could have also detected the variants much better and tell you how the variants, because they can track that. It's, um, the variants are not only useful for vaccine development, or studying, but it also can tell you where the disease comes from because variants usually come along certain pathways. So you can kind of track big movements and sometimes small movements, which can be useful to track down sources of the virus to stop it. And you can kind of get an idea how fast it's mutating in different places. So part of the drug of vaccines to target or drugs to target, all this stuff. But back to the idea about what that, this could be useful is future, see what diseases you have before you even get them or see if you get a disease. Now, will this merely have all of them? No. And another thing was, I've also, you do need to get an MRI, like I've mentioned before. Well, you don't, you don't need to get an MRI, you might. And we would have to figure out how to make all this technology not out of plastics, so not out of metals, and be able to handle it. But as I said before, they're working on ways of doing it, but that I think will be a major challenge. Not impossible. We have um, everything from plastics out there to that can conduct electricity to plastics that can do calculations to ceramics to programming exobiological cells and more, but it's a challenge nevertheless. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully the side about it didn't take too long. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out if you like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers within a year, which is really hard, and 4,000 watch hours within a year. But with your help, I'm sure I can do it. Also, if you have any ideas for future topics or videos, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much. Goodbye.